Well, I, I would say for one, I'm not going to tell black and brown and um, underrepresented communities the way they should message um, the issues that are disproportionately affecting them. Um, defund the police is not solely um, an issue that is uh, democratic um, or Republican, it is activists pleading, pleading um, to live. Um, when you look at the amount of police brutality in this country and who is being disproportionately affected by police violence, um, it, it's black and, and brown communities. And I'm, I'm not going to tell them the Agreed. way that they should message. Because I think defund the police, I think it's a great slogan. Because what it's doing, here we are in December, we're still talking about it. And we're going to continue to talk about it because it's just not going to drift away into the wind like any other platitude statement that comes um, from the Democratic Party. Um, well, we're me, still here ask. talking about it and unpacking it. And the truth is, this is us again playing defense instead of um, offense. Um, and Democrats continue to do this. And we need to unpack um, policing as a whole um, and really get to the root of the problem. You know, policing in the United States was established um, to maintain white supremacy in the, in the early days of this country, the U.S. slave patrols. It was Democrats and Republicans in the 1990s um, that transferred $6 billion in excess military equipment to local, local enforcement agencies under the 1033 program. U.S. cities collectively spend close to $100 billion a year on policing, while schools, healthcare, and other vital programs do not get the funding that they need. So, well, so let me, when so we talk about this. this issue, we need to unpack it and play offense.